You, my son, in this lifetime are a messenger, a harbinger, a bringer of news, a seeker, and frequently a speaker of truth. That is enough for one lifetime. Be happy. But you can always hope for more, and you will. Always will you hope for more. It is in your nature, it is divine nature, to seek always to be more. So seek, yes. By all means, seek. Go ahead and do what you really love to do. Do nothing else. You have so little time. How can you think of wasting a moment doing something for a living you don't like to do? What kind of living is that? That is not a living, that is dying. If you insist that your life is about what your body is doing, you do not understand why you came here. At least do something that pleases you, that speaks of who you are. What your body is doing is not to be discounted. It is important, but not in the ways you think. The actions of the body were meant to be reflections of a state of being, not attempts to attain a state of being. In the true order of things, one does not do something in order to be happy. One is happy and hence does something. One does not do some things in order to be compassionate. One is compassionate and hence acts in a certain way. The soul's decision precedes the body's action in a highly conscious person. Only an unconscious person attempts to produce a state of the soul through something the body is doing. Your life is not about what your body is doing, yet it is true that what your body is doing is a reflection of what your life is about. It is another divine dichotomy. Yet know this, if you understand nothing else, you have a right to your joy. Seek it. Find it. Your life work is a statement of who you are. If it is not, then why are you doing it? Do you imagine that you have to? You don't have to do anything. Everyone can love everything. The moment they understand what they are doing and why. No one does anything he doesn't want to do. So let those of you who have ears listen. I tell you this. You were not meant to ever die. Your physical form was created as a magnificent convenience, a wonderful tool, a glorious vehicle, allowing you to experience the reality you have created with your mind, that you may know the self you have created in your soul. The soul conceives. The mind creates. The body experiences. The circle is complete. The soul then knows itself in its own experience. If it does not like what it is experiencing or wishes a different experience for any reason, it simply conceives of a new experience of self and quite literally changes its mind. Soon the body finds itself in a new experience. I made you as three and one beings. You are three beings in one, made in the image and likeness of me. The three aspects of self are equal to each other. Each has a function, but no function is greater than another. Nor does any function actually precede another. All are interrelated, in an exactly equal way. Conceive, create, experience. What you conceive, you create. What you create, you experience. What you experience, you conceive. That is why I said, if you can cause your body to experience something, abundance, for example, you will soon have the feeling of it in your soul, which will conceive of itself in a new way. 
namely abundant. Thus presenting your mind with a new thought. From the new thought springs more experience and the body begins living a new reality as a permanent state of being. Your body, your mind, and your soul are one. In this you are a macrocosm of me, the divine all, the holy everything, the sum and the substance. You see now how I am the beginning and the end of everything, the Alpha and the Omega. Now I will explain to you the ultimate mystery, your exact and true relationship to me. You are my body. As your body is to your mind and soul, so too are you to my mind and soul. Therefore, everything I experience, I experience through you. Just as your body, mind, and spirit are one, so too is mine. So it is that Jesus of Nazareth spoke immutable truth when he said, I and my Father are one. Forever is longer than you know. Eternal is longer than forever. God is more than you imagine. God is the energy you call imagination. God is creation. God is first thought and God is last experience. And God is everything in between. Today we shall find God together. That is always the best way to find God. Together. We shall never find God apart. I mean that two ways. I mean we shall never find God so long as we are apart. For the first step in finding that we are not apart from God is finding that we are not apart from each other. And until we know and realize that all of us are one, we cannot know and realize that we and God are one. God is not apart from us ever. We also think we're apart from each other. And so the fastest way to find God, I've discovered, is to find each other. To stop hiding out from each other. And to stop hiding out from yourself. The fastest way to stop hiding out is to tell the truth to everyone all the time. Start telling the truth now and never stop. Begin by telling the truth to yourself about yourself. Then tell the truth to yourself about another. Then tell the truth about yourself to another. Then tell the truth about another to that other. Finally, tell the truth to everyone and everything. These are the five levels of truth telling. This is the five fold path to freedom. The truth shall set you free. Remember, life is an ongoing process of creation. You are creating your reality every minute. The decision you make today is often not the choice you make tomorrow. Yet here is a secret of all masters. Keep choosing the same thing over and over until your will is made manifest in your reality. For some, that could take years. For some, months. For others, weeks. For those approaching mastery, days, hours, or even minutes. For masters, creation is instantaneous. Instantaneous. Remember that with each change of mind comes a change in direction of the whole universe. When you make up your mind about something, you set the universe into motion. Forces beyond your ability to comprehend far more subtle and complex than you could imagine are engaged in a process. The intricate dynamics of which you are only just now beginning to understand. These forces and this process are all part of the extraordinary web of interactive energies which comprise the entirety of existence 
which you call life itself. Therefore, be of one mind and of single purpose about a thing. And don't take your mind off it until you have produced it in your reality. Keep focused. Stay centered. This is what is meant by being single-minded.